Now, with respect to 3i Atlas, this, it was discovered on July 1st, uh, 2025, by a small telescope, half a meter in size, because it's bright. It was first spotted on July 1st, 2025. At first, astronomers thought 3i Atlas was just a comet, but then they saw the glow. A strange, impossible light pushing ahead of the object like an anti-tail. This was the first red flag. Now, after a bombshell revelation from a decorated NASA-affiliated scientist, even the world's most famous skeptic, Michael Shermer, is being forced to confront some disturbing news. When someone says, well, this is a really unusual uh, object, compared to what? I mean, what, how deep is our database? How, so this is what's often called the low information zone, like in the study of UAPs and UFOs. The object is big, 28 miles wide to be exact, and it's emitting signals that suggest it's not made of rock and ice, but something else entirely. Something artificial. Red flags in the darkness. The story begins on a quiet summer night, July 1st, 2025. A small telescope diligently scanning the star-dusted blackness flags something new. An object. At first, the astronomers who found it logged it as just another comet giving it the designation 3i Atlas. They thought it was a big one, maybe 20, maybe up to 46 kilometers. That's about 28 miles across. A true behemoth, for sure. But in the vast emptiness of space, size alone isn't what makes something strange. No, the weirdness started to creep in with the details. The thing nobody tells you about space is that it follows rules. Comets, for instance, are basically giant, dirty snowballs. When they get close to a star, the heat cooks them, and they vent gas and dust, creating a beautiful, glowing tail that always points away from the star. But 3i Atlas wasn't playing by the rules. It had no tail. Zero. For an object its size, getting warmed by our sun, that's like seeing a fire that produces no smoke. It just doesn't happen. Many people are crazy about astronomical discoveries, but this one was different. It started to feel off. Then came the observation that sent a chill down the spine of the scientific community. It had a glow, but the glow was in the wrong place. It was an anti-tail, a plume of light pointing towards the sun ahead of the object. It was defying physics. You see, this wasn't just a quirky detail. It was an impossibility by every known model of cometary physics. But not all things are what they seem, and the mystery was only deepening. That's when Avi Loeb, a brilliant and often controversial scientist from Harvard with deep connections to NASA projects, stepped into the picture. He looked at the numbers and saw something everyone else was trying to explain away. He pointed out that if 3i Atlas were a giant rock, its sheer size was a statistical nightmare. It was a million times more massive than the other two interstellar visitors we'd ever seen, Oumuamua and Borisov. Finding something this huge was like winning the lottery a thousand times in a row, so unlikely that you have to start wondering if the game is rigged. Then the data got even more bizarre. NASA's SphereX Observatory took a look and analyzed the gas coming off this thing. It was 95% carbon dioxide and only 5% water vapor. That's the reverse of what you'd expect from a typical comet from our own solar system. This thing was born somewhere very different. The final jaw-dropping puzzle piece came from the Very Large Telescope in Chile. It detected nickel in the gas plume. So what, right? Asteroids have nickel, but the thing is it found nickel without iron. In nature, nickel and iron are almost always found together like cosmic brothers. Separating them is an industrial process, something you do deliberately to create specialized alloys for things like spacecraft. This was the moment the conversation shifted from a scientific puzzle to a deeply unsettling possibility. This wasn't just a rock. It couldn't be. This is where Michael Shermer, the professional skeptic, enters the debate forced to confront Loeb's extraordinary claims. 
The news was disturbing not because of aliens, but because the data was real. A massive object with no tail, a bizarre anti-tail, and the chemical signature of an industrial process was moving through our solar system. And it was getting closer. The object's strange chemistry was baffling, but where it was going was even more terrifying. Mavericks and Mainstream To understand how serious this situation is, you need to understand the two heavyweights squaring off. On one side, you have Avi Loeb. This isn't some fringe character shouting on the internet. He's a former chair of Harvard's astronomy department, a respected physicist who has worked on major projects, some with NASA. He's brilliant, but he's also a maverick. He's famous for suggesting that our first interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, might have been an alien probe. The scientific community largely dismissed him then, calling his ideas reckless. But Loeb's argument is simple. Science should be about following the evidence, not clinging to comfortable assumptions. He believes his peers are too afraid of ridicule, that they would rather invent fantastical, never-before-seen natural phenomena, like nitrogen icebergs or cosmic dust bunnies, than even consider the possibility of technology from another civilization. He argues that scientists have a duty to investigate anomalies, not hide them under the carpet of traditional thinking. On the other side, you have Michael Shermer. He is the founder of the Skeptic Society and the editor of Skeptic Magazine. His entire career is built on dismantling extraordinary claims from ghost sightings to conspiracy theories. He is the ultimate debunker, a champion of reason and logic. His go-to tool is Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is usually the right one. And for Shermer, the simplest explanation is that 3 eye Atlas is a natural object, and we just don't have enough information to understand it yet. He argues we are in a low information zone. We've only seen three interstellar objects up close. How can we possibly know what's normal and what's an anomaly? He quotes other mainstream scientists like Alan Stern, who believe that our solar system is constantly being visited by objects ejected from other star systems, and it's only now that our technology is good enough to spot them. To Shermer, calling it alien technology is a wild leap of faith, not science. This is the core of the conflict. Loeb says the evidence, the size, the anti-tail, the nickel without iron, is extraordinary and therefore requires we consider an extraordinary explanation. Shermer, echoing the great Carl Sagan, says extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And he doesn't think the evidence is there yet. He believes in the consensus of experts, just like you'd trust a team of doctors over a single physician with a radical theory. But the thing nobody tells you is that sometimes the lone voice is the one telling the truth. The debate between them isn't just about a strange object in space, it's a battle for the soul of science itself. Is science about protecting the status quo, or is it about pushing the boundaries of what we know, no matter how uncomfortable the answers might be? While the experts debated, the object kept moving, following a path that was anything but random. Coincidence or design? The universe is a big, chaotic place. Things fly around randomly, pulled by gravity in a cosmic dance that's been going on for billions of years. So when an object from another star system shows up, you'd expect its path to be random, tilted at some weird angle relative to our own solar system. But 3i Atlas wasn't random, not even close. You see, our Sun and all the planets, from Mercury to Neptune, orbit on a relatively flat plane. It's called the ecliptic plane. The shocking thing about 3i Atlas is that its trajectory is aligned with that plane to within 5 degrees. The odds of that happening by pure chance? About 1 in 500. It's like throwing a dart from across a football field and hitting the bullseye. You could say it was luck, but after a while, you have to wonder if the thrower is a professional. This is another piece of evidence that has Avi Loeb deeply concerned. It's one coincidence too many. First, the object is a statistical monster in terms of size. 
Second, it has a chemical signature that mimics an industrial process. And now it's traveling along the superhighway of our solar system, perfectly aligned with the planets. Many people are crazy about finding patterns, but this isn't reading tea leaves, this is math. And the math is getting very, very strange. This calculated trajectory has a destination, a rendezvous. On October 3rd, this massive object will make its closest approach to a planet, and that planet is Mars. It will pass within 29 million kilometers of the red planet. That's about 18 million miles. In cosmic terms, that's a stone's throw. This close pass is an incredible opportunity. NASA has the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, a sophisticated spacecraft that has been circling Mars for years. On board is the high-rise camera, one of the most powerful telescopic cameras humanity has ever put into space. As 3i Atlas sails past, the high-rise will have a front row seat. It will be able to take photographs with such high resolution that it should be able to see the object's nucleus, its solid core. This is the moment of truth. If the images show a giant potato-shaped rock, then Michael Shermer and the skeptics will be proven right. It's just a weird big comet. But if the images show something else, something with structure, with unnatural shapes, with a surface that isn't just rock and ice, then everything changes. The world will have to face the disturbing news that we are not alone and that our first confirmed visitor is a colossal enigma. But as the world waits for the flyby, a darker question emerges. Is this a peaceful visitor or something else? The thing we don't talk about. So here we are. We have a massive object from another star behaving in ways our science can't explain, made of materials that suggest it was built and flying a path that seems intelligently guided. The experts are fighting, with one side demanding caution and the other warning of a failure of imagination. But maybe we're all so caught up in the what that we're missing the more important question, the why. You see, we're treating this like a spectator sport. We're waiting for a picture from a Mars orbiter to tell us if we should be amazed or just move on. But what if this isn't just a passive event? What if the object's arrival is the event itself? The thing is, we need to step back and think about what's happening here. We're watching this unfold on our screens as if it's the season finale of a show placing bets on whether it's Team Shermer or Team Loeb who will be proven right. We've turned the most profound moment in human history into social media fodder. But an object 28 miles wide doesn't care about our online debates. It doesn't care about our scientific reputations. It continues on its path, a silent testament to a universe far stranger than we've been willing to accept. We have to ask if our detachment is a coping mechanism, a way to avoid facing the sheer scale of what this represents. For all of human history, we have stared at the stars and wondered, are we alone? That question has driven our religions, our philosophies, and our science. We built massive radio telescopes to listen for the faintest whisper from the void, a project known as SETI. But the silence has been deafening, leading to the great cosmic puzzle, the Fermi Paradox. If the universe is teeming with life, where is everybody? Now we have a tangible object in our own backyard that might hold the answer. And our first instinct is to argue, to retreat into old debates and comfortable dogmas. One side is so afraid of being wrong that they refuse to even entertain the possibility, while the other might be so eager for discovery that they're seeing patterns that aren't there. Are we all missing the key details? Is it possible the truth is somewhere in the middle, something stranger than a simple rock, but maybe not a spaceship in the way we imagine? What if it's a relic? a cosmic tombstone from a civilization that perished eons ago, sent on its final journey. Let's talk directly here. If this thing was built, who built it and why send it here? Is it a probe quietly gathering data? Is it a message in a bottle? 
Or is it something more active, like a celestial seed carrier or even a warning? The fact that it's here now as our own technology is just beginning to reach out into space feels like a monumental coincidence. Is it possible that this happens all the time and we just never saw it before? Or did something draw it here? This isn't just about a debate between Shermer and Loeb. This is about us. It's about how we as a species react when faced with something that could shatter our entire understanding of the universe and our place in it. Are we ready for the answer? What do you think is the most convincing piece of evidence? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. Are we on the verge of the greatest discovery in human history or are we just seeing what we want to see?